Have you ever seen an invisible sword? Well, I think I have. A few days ago, I saw this picture right here. That is an invisible sword. And now I want one. Just like that. A sword that's not only invisible, but also indestructible. And sharp. A sword that's basically like a normal one. But that you can't see. I'm gonna build one. Not sure how yet, I'm gonna have to figure it out. And then I'm gonna test its sharpness and durability against increasingly harder targets. The first step was choosing the right material. And the first one that popped into my head, well, it was glass. Glass is transparent when it's cleaner than that. And you can make it pretty sharp by using a diamond stone like I did here. But even though there are some kinds of glass that can be more resistant than usual, and even indestructible, according to the companies that sell them. The problem with glass is that glass is glass and glass breaks. At least way too easily to make a katana out of it. But there is another material that not only is transparent, but it's 10 times more impact resistant than steel by weight. I'm talking about polycarbonate. It is generally used for riot shields, armored vehicles, safety glasses, and other indestructible items. And because of all that, it sounds like the perfect material for the job. But I kinda still wanna see for myself how hard it actually is. To find that out, I'm cutting out a small sample from the panel I'm planning to use for the katana. And the idea is to hit the polycarbonate as hard as I can with this unnecessarily big sledgehammer. Three, two, one. And well, I'm not exactly sure what just happened. I only know that even though both sawhorses broke because of the impact, the polycarbonate panel is completely fine. This thing has one scratch, but you can't even feel it. It's not even banded or anything, it's like insane. And since polycarbonate is clearly resilient, meaning it can bend, like a lot, without breaking, it's definitely my best option. So to make the katana, I got a big panel of polycarbonate, 2 meters by 0.5 and 12 millimeters or 0.47 inches thick, which is also the maximum thickness I could find for this material. And this is gonna be the invisible and indestructible body of the sword. Now, to cut the right shape out of the panel, I'm gonna use tape. What I mean is that tape should make it easier to draw the consistent curve of the katana on the panel. And then I can use that as a reference for the actual cut. And after outlining the tape, the edge and completing the handle, I can start to see the final shape of the sword. There is just one thing to point out. I involuntarily made this thing big. Like way too big. It's basically twice as large as a normal katana. And I'm not sure if I should be excited because the katana is massive and it's gonna be powerful or worried because the katana is massive and I might not be able to even lift it. But after making a few scientific tests, I realized that because polycarbonate is so much lighter than steel, it shouldn't be a problem to swing the sword, even if it's that big. And so, I'm not worried anymore. I'm just really excited instead. Then I use a jigsaw to cut out a smaller perimeter around the sword, so that it's gonna be easier to work with it in the next step. And after doing that, it became even more noticeable how big this thing is gonna be. Now the next step is to crop the actual shape of the sword out of the panel. And to do that, I'm gonna use a bandsaw. Then after cutting the shape, I can remove the protective film and I'm gonna be able to see if the sword actually looks invisible. The problem is that bandsaws don't look too friendly, and most importantly, I don't exactly know how to use one. So I got pretty nervous. Uh, I already cut one part, I forgot to film. And I cut it really bad, you see? <laughs> the good thing is that I need to follow the interior line, this part inside here. So my terrible cut wasn't actually a big deal, for now. Then I cut the extra material out of the other side of the katana. And like that, I was getting closer. Now comes the hardest part. I need to follow these lines here and be precise. Now this is definitely scarier. And I don't mind my fingers being close to a deadly saw, but making a mistake here means removing material out of the final katana and potentially having to start from zero. Luckily though, I was getting the hang of it. And after removing the extra material from the handle, I'm fixing the final details on the belt grinder. As you can clearly see here. Anyways, like that, the first step to make the sword is complete. I'm also happy to see the weight of the katana. It's not a problem at all. It's not too light, not too heavy, and the katana is not bending on itself, which means I'm definitely on the right track. And now, a few seconds of silence while I remove the plastic wrap.
Now, the sword looks pretty invisible already, but inside the shop the effect is actually weaker because of the lights. Like in real life, like, like this, it's completely transparent for me. Wait, what if I do this? And that was already more like it. <laughs> or less like it. But outside, it gets even better. <laughs> Bear in mind, you can still see the edges because there is no blade and the spine is not polished. So it might be that the katana also looks darker because the edges block the light. But when the edges are perfectly perpendicular to the camera, this thing looks... fake. The effect is even stronger when there is light behind it. And I'm very excited to see what this katana is gonna look like when it's done. I'm gonna get this thing sharp, then I'm gonna make the handle, and then I'm gonna test it against a lot of stuff. <laughs> the first step to get the sword sharp is to create a bevel on the blade. So after marking the center of the blade using a caliper, I'm retracing the line with a pencil. This line is gonna be my reference for the edge while grinding. Also, to make sure I'm gonna grind the blade symmetrically on both sides, basically like this, I made this tool. This mechanism allows me to set a certain angle, so that when I grind the sword with the belt grinder, the angle should stay consistent, as well as the bevel on both sides. And this is all theory, by the way. I've never grinded almost anything in my life, and this could honestly mess up the entire sword. But of course, there is only one way to find out. And well, even though I felt like I was doing everything wrong at the beginning, after basically one hour of grinding, the first side of the bevel was completed. And besides making an absolute mess everywhere, including on my face, I think it came out bad, but much better than expected. And so, after repeating the process on the other side of the blade, the raw shape of the sword is done. The katana is not sharp yet, but it has an edge now, and so the next step is gonna be making it invisible. To do that, I'm gonna smooth out the angle between the spine and the bevel, mainly to prevent reflections like the ones you see here. And while doing so, I'm gonna also remove the scratches I got from the belt grinder and hopefully turn the katana even more transparent than how it was before. So I got a sander with eight different pads, from a coarse grit to basically a polishing one. And by sanding the katana with each one of the pads, in theory, I'm gonna be able to make it transparent. And well, after a little more than two hours, I was basically done. With the first pad. Anyways, I made sure to remove every single scratch from the belt grinder. And even after just the coarser pad, the katana already looks pretty cool. Now I gotta repeat the process seven times. And so I did. Each time with a finer grit. And each time making sure to remove all the scratches that were there before. And after about one hour and something, I was using the final pad. After that, I'm sending everything with a 2500 grit sandpaper by hand, and with this, I'm finally starting to see the first good results. Now it's looking good. When it's wet, it looks great. Right now, there are still a lot of micro scratches on the surface of the blade, and that's why the katana doesn't really look transparent yet. So now I'm gonna try to remove them using this, headlight polisher. And after applying it on the sword with a sponged pad, the katana was polished and transparent. There is just one problem that I'm realizing literally right now. I forgot about physics. Yeah, wanna know what happens when a block of transparent material has variable thickness like in my case? Distortion, that's what happens. And so even though the katana looks good, and it's transparent, when you look through it, it's gonna always distort the objects behind it. Basically like you see here. And even though I actually like this katana, and I spent three days working on it, I already wrote the title of this video, and I don't wanna clickbait you. So the sword has to be more invisible than that. Now, the problem is that I would always need a bevel to make the sword sharp, and a bevel creates distortion. But what if? What if I try to keep the thickness consistent as long as I can, and then make a really short bevel. By doing that, in theory, the entire sword would be invisible, and only a small part of it would create distortions. So, to confirm the theory, I tried making a small sample with this new concept, and it turned out honestly great. Let's make another sword. <laughs> so, I drew a new sword, cut it out of the panel with a bandsaw, flattened the edges, 
And like that, had the new rush shape of the katana. Then I made a new, shorter bevel on the belt grinder. And even though this took a while, like a long, long while, the new edge came out so much better than the old one. So after polishing it, and polishing the spine of the blade, and turning my hand into a tomato, after one day of work, the final blade is ready. You can obviously still see the bevel, and the bevel still distorts what's behind it. But besides that, now the entire blade is completely transparent. For comparison, this is how version 1 of the katana looked, and this is how it looks now. I really like this, and the more I look at this thing, the more I can't wait to test it. The katana is also pretty sharp now, and I know that because I randomly hit the dummy's head with the blade, and this happened. So yeah, it cuts. At this point, to complete the katana, I gotta make the handle and the guard. Katana guards are pieces of art. They're often handmade and they just look awesome. But I'm a minimalist, so mine is just transparent. I actually tried to do something fancier, but I ended up right away with a chubby Pac-Man. And then it took me one day to make this hole, but at least it fits nicely on the katana. And at this point, I only got the handle left. So my initial plan was to use the acrylic block and then carve a handle out of it. But besides that taking a lot of time, I fear it would probably not come out as transparent as I wanted. Because following the plan, I need to make a hole into the block and then fit the handle into it. And the problem with holes is that they are really hard to polish. Moreover, I only need to add just a few extra centimeters on the thickness of the handle. So why can't I just glue extra polycarbonate to it and then shape everything as a handle? Well, I tried on a smaller sample first, using super glue, and it honestly worked perfectly. It's actually really strong. I hit it here and it didn't move. So I cut two pieces of polycarbonate with the same dimensions of the handle. And after placing an entire super glue bottle on each side of the handle, I glued the two pieces to it. Now I need to smooth the edges and also reduce the thickness of the block in order to get the shape of the final handle. And I'm saying this just because there is no way for you to tell, but I got a big smile under the mask there. Mainly because after grinding for 30 minutes, I was really happy about how the handle was turning out. It's where it's not dangerous. Besides that, the tape I put on the guard to protect it didn't protect the guard at all, but it created a sort of pattern that somehow reminds me of anime stuff, so I think I'm gonna keep it this way. And since the handle already feels pretty good in my hands, I simply finished it by polishing it, as I previously did with the body of the sword. And even though it was completely random, the glue created a unique effect on the handle. It kinda looks like ice. Anyways, with this, the katana is finally completed. And honestly, I don't think it looks cool. I think it just looks like I'm about to start my own anime revenge arc when I'm holding this thing. I absolutely love it. Of course, you can still see the edge, but everything else is basically transparent, especially when there is ground or objects behind it. And now, I wanna test it though. I wanna find out if this actually works like a sword. I wanna see how well it can cut and how powerful it is. To find that out, I get a bunch of targets, from soft to hard, pineapple, watermelon and pumpkin, a wooden plank, a ballistic dummy, and then a brick. The plan is to try to cut all these and see what happens to the sword. Pineapple is first, hardness, 1 out of 10. A normal sword would easily cut this, but I'm not even sure if my katana can actually cut. Let's find out. And well, it didn't take me much to realize. 3, 2, 1. That it really does cut. Hi. <laughs> well, it cuts though. <laughs> and well, I'm really happy about that. What I didn't know is that my happiness wasn't gonna last long though, because on the next attempt, the second worst thing that could possibly happen happened. No, I wasn't expecting this at all. Like, at all. The sword snapped, right after the handle. And then I stood literally five minutes like this, trying to figure out what, why? How was this possible? Polycarbonate is basically unbreakable. 
then why did this happen? The blade itself is absolutely fine though. It doesn't even have a scratch. And then it clicked. The reason why polycarbonate is so resistant is because it can bend a lot and absorb the impacts. And my theory is that by gluing extra material on the handle, I just made it way more rigid than the blade, effectively removing its ability to bend. So who says I need a handle? If my theory is right, the sword without the handle would be basically impossible to break. I'm gonna use it this way and if it works and if it's strong, then I'm gonna remove the sharpness here. But if it works, I mean, it's perfect. So watermelon is next. Hardness, three out of 10. I'm temporarily using a cloth as a handle to not cut myself. And even though I'm a little worried, there's only one way to find out what this sword can actually do. One. And luckily, it went through the watermelon without problems. It doesn't cut clean, probably because of the thickness of the blade and the fact that the blade bends a lot. But so far, it cuts. By the way, I'm gonna eat this one. Next, pumpkin. Hardness 5 out of 10. And this is not a normal pumpkin, besides the shape. But even my supersonic chain whip struggled to slice one of these. It's like, it's way harder than it looks. And yet, the katana actually sliced this one. And also pretty easily. The cut is also fairly clean this time. And once again, the blade is completely fine. Now I'm getting to the hard targets though. The next one is a wooden plank and it's pretty thick too. So I think there are three possible ways this can go down. The katana could snap and break in half. It could bend pretty badly and stay bended or, but it's unlikely, it will break the wood. To find out, I set up the wooden plank and I fix the bottom and the top so that it doesn't move when I hit it. The problem is that I still haven't figured out how strong this blade actually is. And at this point, I really have no idea what's gonna happen. All right, let's just do it. Three, two, one. And well, I wasn't expecting that. It doesn't even have nothing. I completely destroyed that and dented that one. And the edge of the blade is absolutely perfect. So I think I definitely underestimated this thing. Let me, let me try again. I'm gonna try to break that piece. I thought it was maybe just a fluke. So I hit the plank again and the same thing happened. This is the mark he left. The wood is broken and the blade is not even dented. At this point, I only got the two hardest targets left. So I quickly went back to the shop and I smoothed the edges of the handle. And now I got something like this. And I wasn't expecting it, but this handle works just as well as the old one. And so I can move on with the next test. This is a ballistic dummy. It has a layer of ballistic gelatin, which should simulate muscle tissue. And it also simulates bones. I'm gonna hit it twice. Once here on the neck, where there is a lot of gelatin, and then once on the skull. I think it's gonna break. Hit one, neck. I'm checking the blade right away to see if it's chipped or it cracked, but it's perfect. All right. Also, the dummy looks fine though. It didn't seem like the blade went through at first. Oh yeah, I cut it. Oh, no way. And then I saw it. I don't know if you can see, but I cut it right here. And it turns out the katana not only sliced the gelatin and went deep. Oh my God. But it actually shattered the bones below it. That is a piece of bone. It's insane because after the handle, I thought it was gonna be an absolute fail. And instead, the edge of the katana was as sharp as when I started testing it. This thing is insane. I love it. Anyways, now I'm gonna go for the head. Three, two, one. Now, a red thing is coming out of the head of the ballistic dummy, and I wasn't expecting it. So I'm switching to zombie mode for the next shots to make YouTube happy. And here, you can kind of see the damage. The skull got cracked, 
from here to here and there is a deep cut where the katana hit and the katana itself, even after hitting the bone, doesn't even have a scratch on it. This thing is crazy. The last target though is a brick. Hardness, 10 out of 10. This is clearly a dumb test. I shouldn't do this. But so far, the katana destroyed everything without getting damaged. So where is the limit? I wanna find that. I already know the edge is probably gonna get damaged, but I can always fix that by resharpening it. But I wanna see if it's gonna crack or break. And I hope not. Could've chosen a smaller brick, to be fair. <laughs> well, I got the thickest one I could find instead. Anyways, after a bit of mental preparation, I loaded my swing and I hit the brick as hard as I could. Honestly, this is a win. Little chips and damage on the brick. Now, I wanna also try to hit a smaller brick and see what happens to the katana and the brick. And this time, the katana actually broke the brick. And I was definitely happy about it. But the best part for me is not even the broken brick, it's the fact that after all that, this is the only damage on the blade. Then I went back to the workshop and after fixing it and polishing it, the blade itself has a few scratches, but the edge is basically brand new. Next, I'm gonna build an insanely powerful slingshot. Subscribe to see when it will come out. And also, let me know in the comments what you wanna see me build after that one. If you like my videos, you can also get behind the scenes and early access to the videos on Patreon, as well as your name at the end of the video, like you see here. Check it out.